Sudan's lush green fields and temperate climate are home to 120,000 farmers who raise almost 6 million cattle and over 3 million sheep. Livestock production in Ireland is different from the system in most other countries. Because of our mild, temperate climate and fertile soil, Ireland is ideally suited to growing grass for much of the year. This natural advantage allows our cattle and sheep to graze outdoors for nine or ten months of the year. This is the foundation upon which we have built up a successful industry with an emphasis on good animal welfare, exceptional animal health and the finest quality livestock. While most of our livestock goes to supply our domestic agri-food sector, we do successfully export livestock to markets elsewhere, including Britain, the Netherlands, Spain and Italy. The number of livestock exported from Ireland varies from year to year, depending on market conditions and other factors. Typically, we export between 150 and 350,000 cattle each year, with much smaller numbers of sheep and pigs. The total value of livestock exports can be up to 250 million euro per annum. Ireland has a long tradition of exporting livestock and our farmers, exporters and transporters have built up considerable expertise in this area over the years. Every link in the chain is important. When you want to deliver a high quality, healthy animal to a farmer in Europe, whilst ensuring animal welfare is given the highest priority. Irish farmers are knowledgeable and skilled and they respect the land, the environment and the animals that they work with every day. The process starts with the calf on the farm. Calves are born and reared in hygienic surroundings to minimise the risk of disease and to ensure the calf gets the best possible start in life. Particular care is taken by farmers to ensure that calves get an adequate amount of colostrum in the first few hours of life. The antibodies present in the colostrum are vital in giving the calf the start it needs and giving it protection against infections in the early weeks and months of its life. Most of our exported calves tend to be three to six week old bulls from dairy breeds, mainly Holstein and Frisian variants. The majority of these calves are born in spring and early summer, so the peak time for calf exports tends to be February to June. Ireland also exports significant numbers of weanlings, mainly beef breeds. These tend to be between 6 and 12 months of age. These exports happen all year round, with a peak in autumn as spring-born calves are weaned and introduced to concentrate feeding after a summer at grass suckling their dams. Ireland has a highly developed identification and traceability system in place for livestock that underpins all aspects of livestock production from farm to fork. The building blocks of this traceability system include the following elements. An individual identification number for each herd, individual tagging of each animal soon after birth, a passport that is issued for each animal when it is registered after tagging, an on-farm herd register that records all births, movements, etc. This can be kept in a hard copy format or in an electronic format. And a central database that records, validates and stores all records for every bovine animal in Ireland. This central database is called the Animal Identification and Movement Database or AIM. Calves for export are always accompanied by their passports and any movement is recorded on the AIM database. Calves for export are selected and purchased by exporters and are brought on the relatively short journey to one of a number of Department of Agriculture approved assembly centres throughout Ireland, like this one. Exports of livestock from assembly centres in Ireland take place under the direct supervision and oversight of the Department of Agriculture Veterinary Service. To be approved as an assembly centre, the premises has to meet certain standards in relation to structures, facilities, hygiene, biosecurity, record keeping and competence and training of staff. After arrival at the assembly centre, before export, calves are checked by the assembly operator, fed and sorted into appropriate groups. Typically calves spend less than 24 hours in the assembly centre, but this time is important as it allows the calves time to settle down and become accustomed to one another before their journey actually commences. It also gives the assembly centre operator time to monitor the calves to ensure that they are healthy and fit and well. 
Throughout their time in the assembly centre, all staff monitor calves for any sign of illness or weakness, and such calves are separated for veterinary attention and decision on fitness to travel. On the morning of the export, an official from the Department of Agriculture will check the passports of all the animals due to be exported. The checks on the passports will include checks on disease testing information on the passports, checks that each passport is appropriately signed and that the passports are legible. When this initial check on the passports is completed, the official then scans the barcode on each passport. A validation check will then be automatically carried out on each tag number against the central database operated by the Department of Agriculture to ensure that all is in order as regards the health status of herds, age and movement details of the animals, etc. Any tag number which generates an error or discrepancy will be excluded from the export. In the meantime, all calves due to be transported are fed by staff in the assembly centre. Calves are fed in batches and great care is taken to ensure that each individual calf gets sufficient feed. The calves themselves are then checked individually by the technical officer and the official veterinarian from the Department of Agriculture. Calf tag numbers are checked to confirm that they match with the tag numbers on the passports. Each calf is carefully checked by the official veterinarian to confirm that he is healthy and well and that he is fit for transport. Any calf about which there is any doubt is taken aside and not allowed to travel. All transporters involved in long journey transport of livestock must be authorised by the Department of Agriculture and have been allocated an authorisation number. All drivers must be familiar with handling live animals, must have completed a Department of Agriculture approved training course and must have passed an exam and obtained a certificate of competence. Finally, all vehicles involved in long journey transport are specially designed, have to meet a detailed set of specifications and must have been inspected and approved by a veterinary inspector from the Department of Agriculture with specialist expertise in this area. Copies of the transporter's authorization, the driver's certificate of competence and the vehicle approval certificate must be carried by the driver in the truck and will be inspected prior to loading by the veterinary inspector on site at the assembly centre. The Department of Agriculture maintain and make available electronic databases of all authorised transporters, approved livestock vehicles and certified drivers. Prior to loading, the driver of the truck checks the vehicle to ensure that everything is in working order, including the ventilation system, temperature recording system, water and bedding. The veterinary inspector on site does a further check on the vehicle using a standard checklist to ensure that everything is satisfactory with the truck. If the vehicle does not meet the required standard, the veterinary inspector will not permit the journey to take place in that vehicle. The details of all these preloading inspections are recorded on a Department of Agriculture computer system called AFIT, which is a computer system designed specifically to record details of such inspections. One additional document that is important in relation to livestock exports is the journey log. This is a document set out in EU legislation which outlines the number of animals on board, the proposed route, stopping and resting points, destination, etc. The proposed route and journey times has to be formally submitted to the Department of Agriculture 48 hours in advance of any journey and will only be approved by the Department of Agriculture if what is proposed is in compliance with EU rules in this regard. When the official veterinarian is satisfied that all is in order, the loading is allowed to proceed. Calves are loaded in batches into pens on the truck. The transporter and the official veterinarian have to be satisfied that stocking density is appropriate and that in all pens calves have enough space for the journey. Loading is carefully supervised to ensure safety and welfare of calves. Particular care is taken when raising the decks on the truck to ensure that no injuries occur. When loading is complete, the final paperwork is completed by the officials from the Department of Agriculture. An official EU health certificate is issued and signed by the official veterinarian. And this health certificate accompanies the consignment to its destination. After a final check by the driver, the truck departs for the ferry.
A final job for the officials from the Department of Agriculture is to send a message to the authorities in the country of destination. This message is sent via a system called TRACES, and it informs the authorities in the country of destination about the details of the consignment. Well in advance of each livestock ferry sailing, the Department of Agriculture's official veterinarian based at the point of departure, Rosslair Harbour, will have been in consultation with the master of the ship so that all parties are satisfied that sea and weather conditions are suitable. For transporting livestock, uh, the main concern of course is the welfare of the animals and uh, as you're probably aware the sea can get rather nasty. So uh, we have an agreement with Charters and uh, Department of Agriculture, maximum 4 metre wave height. And if it gets over, over that, then uh, we start to think about not carrying them. So we've got to also have a functional stabiliser system uh, for the duration of the passage. And uh, in addition to the actual concrete data that we're getting from the internet and from the weather forecasts, then obviously our own judgement comes into it as well, because sometimes what we see on the screen is not necessarily reflective of a true picture of what's actually happening on the surface of the sea. Once we've assessed all the information, then I send an email back to them either saying yay or nay and copy in the Department of Agriculture in the form of uh, the port vet in Rosslare. Sophisticated and accurate weather and wave prediction systems are now available that have greatly enhanced the accuracy of this data and hence contributed further to the welfare of livestock on ferries. On arrival at the port of departure in Ireland, further checks are carried out by the officials and official veterinarian on every consignment of livestock. These checks include confirming that everything still looks and sounds in order on the transport vehicle from a welfare perspective as well as further documentary checks. Water tanks are checked and topped up if necessary. In, in the export of livestock, this is a, a very much a critical control point. Every livestock vehicle that leaves the country with livestock on board must travel out through Rosslare. The Department of Agriculture's objective is to ensure that livestock and animal health and biosecurity are not jeopardised, that they're protected. But it particularly to ensure that all EU legislation and Irish national legislation is uh, complied with. A good system of communication and collaboration between the official veterinarian at the port and the veterinary inspectors at the assembly centres is in place, with the official veterinarian giving regular feedback to his colleagues at the assembly centre. Any ferry that wishes to transport livestock trucks from Ireland must be inspected and approved by the Department of Agriculture. Ireland has the most comprehensive and stringent legislation in relation to approval of livestock ferries, legislation that goes far beyond the minimal requirements of EU legislation. This legislation is designed to maximise animal health, comfort and welfare on sea journeys, and every approved ferry operator must abide by requirements relating to stability, ventilation and lashing of vehicles. Livestock trucks are loaded in a designated area of the ferry to ensure that ventilation and other considerations are best respected. Vehicles must be placed in designated positions with unrestricted airflow and ease of access by drivers. Air vents are let down and left open. Trucks are held firmly in place by the use of lashing chains, which secure the trucks to the body of the ferry in accordance with regulations regardless of weather conditions expected. Ships' fans are run at maximum throughout the voyage. Diesel fridges are not allowed on the livestock deck to minimise fumes in the livestock area. Drivers do a further check on their livestock at this stage to make sure that all is well prior to setting sail. After the ferry has departed, details of all consignments of livestock on the ferry are recorded in an online database developed by and actively shared between the French and Irish authorities. In practice, this means that before the ferry reaches France, the French authorities have all the identity details of the transport vehicles, the number of animals on board and their health certificate numbers, the French control post to be used and the final destination of the shipment. This advance information allows the French authorities to monitor and check that trucks are stopping when and where they are supposed to. It's important for the French authorities to be aware of where the, what animals are expected at what control point. Uh, they, they, they are required to do checks on, at control posts. 
So this information just indicates to them exactly what, to the French authorities, what exactly where the animals are going, how many are expected and how long they plan to stay. This system greatly helps the verification and monitoring of compliance with welfare rules. The feedback and results of all the French checks are available to the Irish authorities online using the same file sharing system, so that any problems can be followed up or investigated as needed. During the ferry crossing, drivers check their trucks and livestock on a regular basis by arrangement with the ferry staff. Typically, calves tend to spend a considerable proportion of their time lying down during the time at sea. Immediately upon arrival at the port in France, each animal transport vehicle must go to a nearby approved control post in France where the animals are unloaded, fed and rested for a legally set period. In the case of calves, the journey times from Ireland are such that the calves must be rested for a period of 12 hours. In the case of older animals, the rest period is 24 hours. This is one of several approved control posts in northern France. The calves are unloaded pen by pen from the truck and are fed in batches. The control post operatives take care to ensure that each individual calf gets fed and rested. Authorities from the French Department of Agriculture carry out spot checks on a percentage of consignments of livestock from Ireland to confirm that all requirements are being met and that the welfare of the animals is not compromised. In addition, each animal is inspected by a local veterinarian who must certify that the shipment is fit and healthy before allowing the transport vehicle to depart for its final destination. The journey log is then signed and stamped by the control post manager and once the set rest period of 12 hours has passed, the calves are reloaded onto the truck for the final leg of their journey to their destination. Ils boivent toujours très bien, très bien, très très bien. Ouais. Ils boivent deux litres et demi de lait par, à, chaque, à chaque repas, par repas. Les veaux qui arrivent d'Irlande sont en bonne santé, ouais, très bonne santé. Les veaux vifs euh, sont bien vigoureux. Mm. Throughout the journey by road, the driver of each transport vehicle is constantly aware of the health of the animals in their care. Driver rest periods are strictly enforced and the animals are checked at each stop. Water levels and temperature are monitored from the cab. Upon arrival at their final destination, in this case the Netherlands, the calves are unloaded carefully and put into individual pens. Once unloading is complete, the farm representative receives all passports from the transport operative and each animal is scanned to make sure each tag correlates to the correct passport. The calves are then fed a mixture of water and electrolytes Four hours later, this is repeated, and after a further 12 hours, they are fed milk as normal. Within hours, the calves are content and have settled into their new environment. We buy Irish calves because they have a good quality and we can work very well with them here in the Dutch system. The calves arrive in a strong condition and after feeding twice, they have the same condition as they left the dairy farmer in Ireland. A priority for us is how well they are looked after after collecting from the dairy farmer in Ireland up to this farm here in Holland. From an animal welfare perspective, we are happy of the condition the cows arrived in from Ireland. With the agri-sector and exports set to grow in the future, Ireland is forging ahead in terms of animal welfare legislation and oversight. With up to 350,000 cattle exported from Ireland each year, their health, well-being and welfare are paramount to providing a quality animal to overseas markets who are happy to pay a premium for the quality of Irish stock. <laughs>